Greetings, everyone. I'm Scott Rodell here at the Great River Dawa Center, and this is another episode of Chinese Swords and Swordsmanship. In this episode, I'm not going to be talking about Chinese swordsmanship or about antique Chinese swords, but about boots. Yes, boots. No, not these boots. These are a pair of Mongol boots I picked up in China several years ago on a trip to Inner Mongolia. We're going to be talking about Qing combat boots. So here we have a pair of Qing combat boots. But before we talk about the specifics of these boots, we should talk about why we should we be even interested in combat boots. Today, it's very common for practitioners of Chinese martial arts or Chinese swordsmanship to practice barefoot, particularly within Taiji Chen. Most practices indoors on a clean floor. In fact, I often practice in bare feet. Here in the Wuguan, we have a nice polished wood floor and we keep it very clean. No street shoes are worn past the door. So it's very convenient to go barefoot. However, in the past, the vast majority of practitioners were soldiers or professional bodyguards, and occasionally in the peasant areas, farmers would have practiced maybe some of their local village martial arts. Of course, all those practitioners were training outside, so of course they wore boots. Back in those days, these arts were called Wu Yi, martial arts, not Wu Shu. And they were indeed preparation for warfare, not for self-defense. And so when you're going out into the battlefield, you know a battle is coming, you have time to prepare yourself and to get your combat boots on. So Chinese martial arts were indeed shoe-wearing martial arts. These particular boots are very similar to Manchu riding boots. The one real difference in style would be that the sole is made of hard leather instead of felt. And I imagine these were probably not quite as comfortable to wear all the time, but these heavy iron studs on the bottom. And that's probably why we have this toggle on the front of these, something I've never seen on Manchu riding boots, so that you can put them together and hang them from your shoulder. And when you knew the battle was coming, you switched into your combat boots. Other interesting feature of these, besides that they're made of very tough, hardened leather, is of course those heavy iron studs on the bottom. I don't think anybody would ever want to be kicked with boots with studs like that. Another interesting feature is this sort of dedicated lifted toe which makes a, a kick with the toe quite convenient and easy to deliver. So you can easily say that these shoes were indeed weapons, part of the bannerman's kit. In fact, it would be quite unusual for Chinese martial artists to train barefoot back during the Qing dynasty. In fact, if we look at the painting of the Emperor Qianlong watching a match between two wrestlers, we note that while that is held outside on a carpet in front of the emperor, both of the wrestlers are still wearing boots. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this rather different episode of Chinese Swords and Swordsmanship, focusing on combat boots. If you did, please subscribe, and if you'd give us a thumbs up, we'd appreciate that. And also, if you're interested in learning how to wield a Chinese sword, the Jian, the Dao, or the Chinese two-handed saber, please check out the links below for the Academy of Chinese Swordsmanship and the courses at Three Islands Media. Thanks again. Until next time, Zai Jian.